happy Christmas. We're on day 21 of the Advent. How did that happen? Day 21, we're nearly at the end of 2024. Wow. Okay, this is my last one with you. Save the best till last. We've got wire work. Oh, favourite. Not best till last, but you know, one of my favourites. Let's have a look at what we've got in box number 21. Uh, push that back over there. Oh, this is gorgeous. I can't believe this was in the advent calendar. Sakura agate. It's the Japanese for cherry blossom. Isn't that stunning? Absolutely stunning. And I love the flecks of slightly different colour. So you've almost got leaf running through there. It's just beautiful. And you can imagine the blossom um, sitting on the trees like this. Stunning, stunning. Um, they're in these sort of barrels. Are we got barrels? Um, the gorgeous shape of beads so it tapers at each end you've got you've got the smooth sides and i did think what am i going to do with it because it would make a great articulated body for something um and i was tempted i was very tempted but i did then think i've only got an hour to demo i probably need quite a weekend to demo that so um i went for this necklace i love it it makes quite a statement so it looks amazing absolutely uh, the sakura when i made this necklace so I've, I've done it in copper um and i've also added in some four mil um malachite rounds thank you thank you michael my brain went then um so four mil malachite rounds today as a contrast i'm doing it in silver wire with some um white shell pearl so what are we going to need could you do it if you're starting off absolutely you can this is this is something you can do if you're an advanced wire worker or if you're a beginner wire worker you can have a go at this it's modular i love modular projects so each of these are um separate little um oh what they're called units modules um and you make these each individual units you can add as many or as one so you could just have one one unit um and have a chain going up if you wanted you could make these if you pop, popped a um a chain from either end of the the upper arches let's say you could actually make earrings with them they'd look quite good as earrings um i've added uh, an extension at the back so i've made an extension lead for a uh, lead extension lead we're not walking the dogs Alison we're doing wire work <laughs> an extension chain at the back and then finished it with another one of the agates I love it I love it it will take you anywhere this necklace so whether you do it in bare copper plated wire or sterling silver it's not going to matter it's going to look lovely so what do we need we're going to need obviously our agate um one mil wire you're going to need more than that um one mil wire of whatever color and 0.4 wire um you're all go also going to need some eye pins and and some head pins um check back on today's show on the 21st um because we've had eye pins and head pins on the show today um so check back there so tool wise um it's quite easy um, some round nose pliers, some flat nose pliers or chain mail, both will, both will do it, it doesn't matter. Um, some cutters and a larger mandrel, so some form of larger mandrel. Um, I've, I'm using the very end of my um, ring mandrel, you could use a thick marker pen, um, something to make the bigger loops, so we need that as well. Um, there we go if if to make the smaller loops you're not sure you can do consistency then use a stepper pliers and use the smaller part of the stepper plier depending on the wire you're using if you want to you can also make the um jump rings so we haven't got many jump rings in there in fact there's only jump rings in the extension and the clasp um so i've made the clasp everything's out of the same wire so if you wanted to, you could make everything out of whatever wire you're going to use and then it will all be very consistent. So 
if you're doing if you've got a colored wire or an antique bronze anything oh, excuse me anything like that then that's the way to go so let's start making our little modules we're going to use one mil wire and um, keep your eye on um, the left hand side by the way because Tom's been loading up some um, wires so we've got some one mil copper wire um, rose gold plated um, which will look stunning with this this will go with any whether you've got silver bronze or gold it's gonna you'll see how different you've got all those tones in the gemstones and also I think with the silver and the white it's going to look quite bridal mm, I think it'll look quite bridal so um, I'm gonna use a cutter use a scissors for that not make cutters let's do that yeah oh yes um, some fiscars they, they go with me everywhere so I'm going to take that off the temporary strand they're lovely I just look at that one that's amazing our gates I know this is a very rare agate but they want to oh look at that they are one of the most um underrated agates and quartz are underrated so underrated and it's lovely to get the specialist ones coming through and everyone goes oh yeah which is absolutely lovely because I love them oh, I love these right okay so first off we're going to cut our um initial shape I work off the reel I, I find it much easier it, it saves so much wire so I'm going to cut all my shapes and there is hang on a second I think there's ten. One, two, oh, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. because I need the one for the bottom of the of the extent extension chain so there is nine of the little um I suppose they're like petal shapes I don't, I don't know what you'd call them actually it wasn't done with a, an exact in mind so this is uh, 12 centimeters long so this is for the bottom part so you want nine of these and you just so when I do something like this if you haven't if you want to do it slightly different size do your first one and then unfold it and that becomes your template it doesn't matter that it's not exactly straight that's fine just do your first one and then open it admit uh, uh, accept you're going to waste that first one um or do do two because you can resize as you're doing it so as we go along we will resize it so one two three four and as you can see all i'm doing is making sure they match at the top and then i butt up my pliers uh, my cutters to the wire to cut the other one so you you could um snip the other end but i'm, I'm, I'm yeah i've never bothered with that um it gives you such a consistent size without you having to measure it because if you've got to um, measure that by one two three four five if you've got to measure that by um tape measure it's very fiddly whereas all you've got to do is press there and snip there and it's so much easier you're not trying to get it to the exact same size um on on a tape measure because that is that is fiddly trust me i have done it in the past one two three four five six seven two more if you've got a tidy one to begin with then you could reuse it but this one certainly can't be reused uh, so there we go so we've got our nine of that and I tend to keep these so so if you've made a design put a little bag in and label it whether you keep it with that or put it somewhere else just say it was this this necklace even if you can pop a little photograph of it um, and keep those and then you've got them so if you ever want to make another one of that then you can so the little V in the middle which is eight centimeters and these were by accident so one two and again um yeah eight and twelve centimeters how did that happen pure fluke three and that's the joy if it is a slightly odd size um then it, it doesn't it doesn't matter um you know if it was if it was uh 13 and a half centimeters 
it's not going to matter because you can you can just do, measure it one two three four five and it's quicker it also goes for if you're doing um simple loops then do one undo it take it out and if you've got all the same size gemstones you can cut them all to begin with and it speeds it up tremendously uh, one two five six seven eight one more to go nine it is it is it is easier to keep track if you're not actually if you're not actually talking at the same time so we've got all our right sizes we've got our head pins and our eye pins up there we've got our gemstones there and there we're good to go okay so first off let's not mix those up although they're quite easy to tell apart we're going to do the big size the the bottom part of it so i like to bend with a flat nose plier if i can um these we we've usually got some on the website um they go to such a fine point can you see how one's thicker than the other even this this is so fine this is this is my uh, prong mating, making pliers if i if i ever lose these i don't know what i'm going to do i think i've got about four pairs of them in the house <laughs> um so we want to fold it in half so we're just going to fold that around like that which gives us a rough idea and then we'll get an exact so whenever i do a, a bend don't worry if it's not spot on you can always tweak it so one's slightly longer than the other so before you've got that tight bend in you can tweak it and go over a bit more till they're exact and again don't worry if they're not exact exact with this one we want quite an open v so whilst we do want it quite shut at the bottom it's going to open up quite quickly the joy with the so you can see where that's open because we've got to fit the other wire in there but when we start we actually want them to be close and then we can curve them at the same time so to get that shape to get that shape if you try and do each one individually to get them even is incredibly difficult so we work them both at the same time but the difference between doing a bend with these or a bend with these is if you look at the depth so this one goes deep quite quickly this one doesn't so i'd use the tip of that to to, to minimize the graduation because that if i do a bend with that you get this it get you get a wider shape so just to exaggerate it you can see you sort of get an uneven wider shape whereas with this bit you get a much tidier shape and then you can go back in and just cr get a really really neat finish it, it's a much much better angle right so once we've got that nicely in there i'm just gonna get that you can leave it as a loop loop as a, as a rounded one if you want um that's fine once you've got that one the easiest way to do the other so before you take your next step is to bend them all because you can then pop that one to there hang on yeah again it makes sure they're all uniform but it actually makes finding the center easier make sure i've got my little side you put that in there and just bend it over you're only just going to do that first bit but it gets it in the correct space so you put that in there and you've got you've got your bend it is a guide it's like having a template so all the time we're doing this we're, we're actually saying okay i've got that bit now i'm going to bend that one to match it 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 speeds things up i know it sounds stupid but you saw me fiddling to get to get where that was equal whereas this now these are all going to be right um so you don't have to have that faff so that's a, a top tip for it. if you're doing anything that involves repetition and units as soon as you've got one unit you will almost almost sacrifice it which i did with that one and undo did it and say right now i've got that unit i know what size it is i know what piece of wire i've got i'm now going to do another one and then that becomes the template for all of them so whatever you're doing you're creating a template
totally if you wanted to you could make an extra one of these put it in the bag um, and have a complete first unit template but I wouldn't stitch them together I would keep them separate and then you can measure them so at each stage we'll measure them against each other so let's go back to these so now we've got that we're going to bring that together because we want to put it here now you want to have it roughly in half except you want you want this to be slightly less so I'm using right at the very tip and I'm not I want that roughly slightly off center but but not far I don't want to do it from there because the curl starts if you have a look at the little one you can see they come down towards it so it, the curl doesn't start at the the base we want that long V and it doesn't start at the end so let's put it right near the end there and so we've got this sort of weird shape so we're going to do that for all of them well, I'll do it for a couple I might not do it for all of them we'll, we'll see how time goes we're just going to bend those in whoops I nearly did it you see and then fetch those around so you're fetching them all around to where you want them to be when you're making prongs if you do any prong setting this sort of technique gives you brilliant brilliant um, prong sizes so the reason I use these right at the tip there is quite a shallow prong so if you've got any cabochons that aren't deep that's about the depth you want and then you come down here and go beyond that tapered bit actually into this bit here where they're square and that depth there is a decent sized prong for a lot of cabochons if it's an enormous one then that's a bespoke one but that would give you over the course of a, um, let's say you're putting four prongs in all your four prongs are going to be exactly the same size it's just a nice way of getting that consistency and with something like that if it's a regular shape the more consistent it is then the more professional it'll look the, the if it's if it's something like um oh let's let's take an agate slice where it's a very irregular shape sometimes they have slightly different depths um, then your prongs are all going to be irregular so I would never try and make them uniform because the stone isn't uniform and they'll look odd because some will barely tick over the top and some will be miles over the top so you'd have to cater for each one but because it's not regular and also you can pop them into little bits where it goes in so it, there'll be a natural place to put your prong so for things like that you don't necessarily want regular regularity but for something like this then then you do want regular regular i can't say that word regularity gosh blimey um i wouldn't mind if welsh was, was my first language but it is in english is <laughs> so now we've got these we're going to open them out okay so now you've got your shape but that is um an even side i'm going to put my thumb in there not put my thumb in there put my finger in there and just curl it so take your round nose pliers i do quite a small loop when you're getting towards the end of the loop so you're not going to take the loop all the way around and turn it let me go to a scrap again if you do that so if you take that loop all the way around to there so you've got your p what happens when you try and then round that you'll get a funny shape if you do it in one motion so as you loop that as you're coming towards the end you want to start curling it and you get this natural curve can you see can you see how that gives you that natural curve there we go that's better <laughs> gray on gray silver on gray wasn't the best of choice was it michael sorry <laughs> um, that gives you that natural curve just to give it that little little kick out and then you can um, add it so when we go into there we're going to go part way round and then we're going to put in and get that little kick out and we're going to do that for all of them so we're going to go in and just do that little kick out you don't want a much of a one now if I went in 
this is this is too big to fetch that to there because that's what we need to do is we need to me make those meet if i go on a much of a smaller one um it's not so you can if you want it's it's going to be too small you can if you want and i'm looking for my pen use something like a pen because that will be smaller find the right bit and then you can curve it in so now we've got and that again is going to give you consistency of shape so we've now got our consistent shape we need to do that for these three i would recommend you do it as you go along because do all of the bits at one point because you'll come back if you come back to those and he's like oh what did i use for that oh who's pinched me pen where's that gone so try it doesn't matter if they're all at that stage so if you're all at that stage great go away have your tea come back or take your dogs for a walk or think oh no i've got to finish the christmas shopping or whatever but just just to keep that consistency again it's how i work i have to work hard at getting random so if you were watching if you're watching the program earlier and i knit that's not how i normally knit um i i i normally am quite a tight knitter um in fact if mum and i mum and i had couldn't do so mum couldn't do say a sleeve on a jumper i was knitting um or i used to i used to knit teddy bears she couldn't sort of say oh i'll do the arms for you because um if you take it from a jumper her knitting um would be about a size or two bigger than my knitting um because i do everything on a tight tension so same with my wire work i like it to be tidy and neat um so i tend to do it um on quite a tight tension my seed beading i do on a tight tension i had to really work hard when i did um shibori no sh yeah shibori because if you do it on a tight tension it all snags so it's actually quite difficult so i found it hard to to actually pull that back and, and keep it loose but you know it's good to learn new techniques but then i'm back to my old tricks and doing everything on a tight tension so <laughs> uh, right if you do use a, a tapered pen then mark where you've done it so you're getting the same there you go it's just at the start of that logo so you're getting again you're getting the same um size wise but there's definitely a reason for doing it like this so you had the bigger to begin with um right don't again worry don't that they're not all um sewn in because we're going to attach those there we go pop that one in there right so we've got four this is enough to, to show you obviously you've got the other five to do so we've got that basic shape if you want and you've got some wacker plates um or a pair of flat nose pliers or a, or a hammer and block you can see how these are not hang on let me there you go so these are not all flat to the plane so you want to just make sure they're all level so you'll see it more from that one yeah so you need to make sure that they're all in the same place and flat there we go and that one's definitely definitely a bit wonky i think he's been on the christmas uh the christmas uh, eggnog yeah okay right so that's our that's our base units which can also double up as frogs we've we've, we've got frogs legs going on there or they can make a butterfly or they can make um a little flower there for you so you can use you can use things like this for all sorts yeah and just overlay them and, and give them a, a little tweak they make a nice flower i'd close that up but anyway so now we've got those we're going to turn our attention to the smaller one this is much easier this is just a v so again we're going to take the first one bend it roughly in half there we go and again we want that nice tight center so just flatten it out okay so we've got our um bit that's going to go in there 
Let me pull that down. There we go. So now we can take, now we can do another four. So, and then we've got the set. So just open that slightly as before. Um, oh, I used to have the tape measure out many, when I started and I would measure each one. And I'd be, it'd take me forever. It's the same with doing um, the wrapped loops. So if I was putting, if I was putting these and I don't know whether these will go on. I don't think they'll go on the one mil. I'll show you with a head pin. Um, but I would, I would put them all on, bend them, and then go back and do all the loops. Much, much quicker. So you'd cut out, I'd have loads and loads of pieces about, you know, a centimetre of wire or whatever, whatever worked. I don't think this is going to go on the one mil, is it? Oh, yeah, it does. There you go. So to do, to do the, to do, um, if you wanted to make those into a chain, just pop a loop on the end, pop it onto there, so you know it's that big, then bend that over, let me clear some space, pop that back around to make your loop, tighten it up, so you know where your loop is going. If in doubt, you can just kick that so that it sticks out, especially if you've got side cutters. Trim that off. So that's your, that's your loop. So that's great. You know, you've made one. If you've got to do that each time, it's, it's a pain. So what you do now is you undo it. You accept that you're going to waste this. So if I was doing a sterling silver one, um, I would do this with plate get my template in plate because I don't like doing templates in sterling. Yeah, you don't want to waste your precious metals when you've got, you can do it with your, with your plated metal. So this is, might be quite tight to pull out. Come on. It's coming, there you go. So then you'd straighten up your piece of wire and away you go, you say, right, let me I need I need 20 30 of these to make the necklace off we go cut cut them all that size so you're just sitting there watching telly going cut 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 doesn't matter you doesn't matter what you're doing pop that back in get it in the middle bend them both sideways so I would do that with all of them I'd pop them all in so I'd have them all there like this like little um, rollers garden rollers come along with your pliers and all you've got to do then is roll that one that way and that one that way and there you've got your loop so that that makes those infinitely more because you're not picking up putting down you're not picking up your pliers putting them down all the time you're just doing them with the same hand so that's a that's a a, a slight digression but that's a top tip for you so we've got our Oh, I made one extra. Um, we've got all our thingies. I'm going to turn these in. Now these, I don't mind. I'm not going to do these with a template. So I'm going to take my round nose pliers. And you know what we were saying before about continuing that curve. So I'm going to take that around as I get to there. See where I'm holding it? I've got my pliers in here. I know it looks an awkward angle, but it gives me the chance to continue around there. To hold it here, wherever you hold it is the end of your curve, okay? If you want it to curve, so I'm gonna get a, a scrap piece, I'll take that one. If I wanted the curve to be very short, I'd pop that in there, hold it there, and the only bit that'll curve is that bit there. If I want it to curve all the way down, like we're going to do, I'm going to pop that in there, hold it at the corner, this time as I go round. Can you see how that whole thing, that whole thing curves? So if I pop that down, you can see the difference. That's curving all the way around there. That's straight and just the top curving. So wherever you hold the wire, that's where your curve will stop. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a break. So we're going to pop that in here, hold the corner. So I've got my arm twisted and curve. 
okay you might want to these these are going to fit in there so you might want to tweak these so I need to open that more and tweak it more so we want to have that open more so that it sits slightly higher and that's got to curve more so I'm going to just manually curve that a little bit more so that it's going to sit on there okay so that'll sit a bit if I make that a little bit wider there we go there we go sorry I didn't look up then to see where it was okay now I think I've made these a bit long so I'm I'm going to trim one so, so we can we can see if you think that because that or this one is slightly small should we shall we say to go together so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another one so this is how I will make an adjustment. If you haven't got the template, you can also curve them out. So this is one mil wire. Um, if you're doing it with sterling silver or bare copper, you can warm the wire to, to make it more malleable. Stir, when you're doing it with plated, it doesn't have that effect because you, you're actually not warming down into the core of the wire. So you're just warming the, the plating, for want of a better word. Um, so I was going to cut some off, wasn't I? So trial and error, how do you do it? I would say put that in so that I'm going to cut off the depth of my pliers. So I'm going to start with that, snip off there. Whoops, come back there, snip off there. So this is, this is turning into a bit of a, not only how to, but how to alter a design, how to change it for yourself, how to think, you know, I could give it you exact and say, right, we've done this, do that, do that, do that. But also help you go on to create your own and to think, well, actually, that needs to be slightly different there. So we're just going to put that curve in. If you struggle with one mil, if you struggle with your one mil, do it with 0.8 and have a practice. It will be that much softer. So let's curve that down a bit more like that. There we go, can close that book up a bit. So that's going to be a bit better. So I'm going to take that round a bit. There, perfect. Okay, so that gives us our perfect shape. So we can now do the rest of them. So I want to do a little loop there. So this is going to be my new template. I need to cut off the depth of my plier. So I'm going to open that up and cut off the depth of my plier and adjust this one. The others are, are all easier because they've not been bent. So you just snip off the top of your plier. This is why you would test it properly beforehand. So I, what I should have done is carried on and got my complete set before moving on to this stage because I've now had to alter the rest of them. There you go. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. So now we've got now we've got a template. That was easier because we were using the same tool and it, it, it's an automatic template because you're using the mandrel. This one you want them all to be roughly the same so that I will measure against and pull it into shape until they match and then you can turn it round and do the same thing on the other side wire um i talk to my wire i talk to my wire a lot um you have to be friendly with it you have to persuade it sometimes that it was its idea to bend that way so if your wire has come off the reel uh, that's a little bit open there there we go pretty good that's going to be pretty good. So if, if your, your wire has come off the reel and it's curving that way round, but you want to turn that way, if you try and turn it, it will kink. So what you have to do is, and I know I said you don't warm it, you're not warming it, but you are persuading it gently to turn that way. So this now will curve nicely that way and not so nicely that way. Um, it, 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 wire is kidology. It's all about persuading it to do what, what you want it to do. Um, but don't be afraid. Push comes to shove. And if you've not done it before and you're not confident, do it in plate 
or in bare copper don't do it in sterling silver because obviously you can ruin bits of wire and whilst throwing that away is probably going to cost me tuppence um you know throwing something that length of sterling silver one mil is probably a tenner or 20 quid you know you don't want to be doing you don't want to be wasting that or having to make jump rings out of it or chop it up yes you can melt it down absolutely and reuse it however you don't want to waste it in the first place you don't want to to do that so always practice if you've never done if you've never done it before do it in plate and um, totally do it in plate um many years ago a friend of mine had an absolutely gorgeous gemstone decided she was going to make a ring with it decided she was going to get some gold wire cost a fortune obviously because it's gold wire um bought this gold sourced and bought this gold wire i said have you tried your your ring oh no i know what i'm doing i know what i'm going to do she did the ring she made mistake after mistake and ended up basically scrapping all her gold wire devastated absolutely devastated so if in doubt make it first and i've done that i've if it's a new design i've done it in plate and gone i don't want to break that down i really like it and actually i had to buy another stone to recreate it so it, it can be swings and roundabouts um it's it's all good it's all good right let's go to this bit now so we're going to pop these two in like that we've got a little bit of weaving down here to do so i'm going to show you the weave first on a couple of a couple of straight bits and then we'll do it in there so we've got our two pieces of wire this is one of my favorite weaves now i'm going to bring it over for a minute because i'm going to double check yeah so they don't tend to have these weaves don't tend to have names so it's a five and two but the same weave is a five and two you can do a four and two you can do a six and two a six and three a three and three you know it's just single wrap and then wrap around the both single wraps and then wrap around the both so how do we do that we're going to start our point four if you can use your point four from the reel because what you what you what what you'll find is again you waste a lot less it means you're not putting so many joins in which i you do you're not always going to be able to do a piece without joining in extra wire we will today but if you have to join in extra wire minimize the amount you have to join in and and, and it's better so i tend to work off the reel if you've got um very springy wire then it's not so bad if you've got um a beautiful this is this is a bit hard for, for point four um now we have such soft wires and they're beautiful to use i just pop my wire through there and tip it over i'm not going to bend it over far because i don't want it to crease properly but it's gently and it stops it it's not going to un unwind there is nothing worse than having your wire as you're going along going chick, 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 and you just end up with this ball of wire and that's devastating even if it's a a, a 10 mil reel you don't want to do that because undoing point four is a nightmare so these two wires we're going to start off by going four times so i've put it in i'm gonna let go of that one i've got an inch or two doesn't doesn't matter wrap it round once it's just so that you can hold it. If you don't have that and try and take it to the start, all it does is the whole thing flips round. So it just means it anchors it. So you want to do four times round. Now, I work on tension. With my wire weaving, I like a nice tight wire weave. So I work on the tension. So as you're coming round, I'm holding it. So I've got the wire between in my hand, basically, but loosely. You don't want to grip it like that because every time you do that, you're work hardening your wire. So loosely, um, it, it's basically there to keep it out of trouble so that it can't get itself in a knot. I'm holding it between my middle finger and my thumb with my index finger guiding it. And you can see there's a slight tension there. So I'm keeping the tension between there and there. So if you were on a sewing machine, that's, that's my tensioning. That there is my tension. And that is, is my guide. So I'm going around, then I've slipped and held the two 
to come back round. So can you see that action? I kind of go hold it around there and then my finger is in place and that pushes it up against. So each time I go round and we're going to do five, then I do that. So round and down. So that's our that's our um That, that, that's how I keep the tension. And then every now and then, I'll squidge it up together. If you haven't got any nails, gently use a flat nose plier or a chain nose plier and just ease them in together. At this stage, as you can see, it will still move. As soon as you get more, this will start um, solidifying. Take your other piece of wire. So now we're going to add in our two wraps over both. So we're going to go one, two, if you pull that, so I, you'll notice I've not got as much tension. I'm not going down there. I'm not pulling it because you want to maintain this gap. So where I've got my thumbnail, you want it about, well, you want it 0.4 thick. So a thumbnail is perfect. So as you're going round, you're not pulling really tight. Then you're going to go between the two. Now I can pull tight. Now I can make sure that's really fixed. If you didn't do that, so let me do another one here. So one, two, three, four, five. If I didn't do that and I pull those two tight together, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do it with this wire. What will happen is you can't get the wire between. And at that point, you'll end up with your wire stuck there to do your next four. So then you'd end up with this gap forming there which man on a galloping horse is not going to notice he's he, you know they're not they're not going to see it i i'd know it's there so you can try and squidge it because what's happening is those two wires are bringing these two too close together so you end up with them like that and then you're trying to force another wire through so it, it never gets right down to that gap um if you think of a wedge going in a door or something it's so so if this is our two wires you want it right in there but because it's so tight my finger won't go past there so I can't get to there because the gaps not big enough so if you've pulled that too tight that's what's going to happen and um, that's why you don't you don't pull that tight tight until after you've gone round okay so that's the basic that's my five and two weave like i say whether you do four and two six and two six and three four and three any combination of that is a weave this now won't slide on that one you've got too many single wraps around there this one will still move so you'll that one will still move um right so i'm going to cut this off here get another bit of 0.4 out and as you, you know, as you're going along, you can just add a little bit of 0.4. If you don't want to work on it, on the reel, then we're only actually weaving this small part here. So you're not actually using, so it's just, it's just this bit here, just in this piece here. We're not using an awful lot of wire. So you only need maybe nine or 10 inches. Uh, how many is that centimeters? Um, I can't remember. So you can do it there so i tend to i would start in the middle leave that free so pick them up and we're going to be weaving four times five times around here and then we're going to catch that one in so without picking up the other one we're going to do one and as we saw to begin with we can slide it so you don't have to try and hold the corner and weave you can weave it up here and and, and move down one two three four five squidge if you end up getting it loose like that as you're weaving it when you squidge it will be uneven because the uh, there'll be excess wire uh, one two three four five okay so now i can slide that down to the bottom what you can do now with this tail is loosely, and I mean, whoops, go through there. I mean loosely, just wrap it and hold that in place. It holds the wire out of the way, 
but it holds that into place. So now this is the reason I haven't fastened these bits is, oh, hello, Francis. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, love your demos, Alison. You make everything seem possible to do, even for beginners. Oh, thank you, Francis. It is. All, all it is is breaking it down into pieces you can manage. And once you've practiced those pieces, then you can build it up to higher. Um, you know, heavily woven pieces start with basic weaves and then they're just layered on top of each other. So things like this are great for really getting going. So we're now going to do our two back round there. Okay, so and then you're coming between. Now you're going to have a bigger gap because you've got that um, arch going one, two, three, four, five. Come back round here for two. I think we do three lots. Because my curve started, I'm going to take that a bit further down. Because my curve has started, one, two, then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm doing two on this one. So we've got that attached there. I'm going to pull that wire between them because if you cut it off when it's loose, what will happen is you can catch that. So by fetching it between two wires, even though those aren't really close, close, it means you can get your pliers in and snip. So you're going right in there and snipping so that it's, it's out, of, out of sight. If you've got um, side cutters, get in as close as you can, but then squidge it with your um, flat nose pliers just to make sure that that is now out of out of harm's reach now we're going to turn around so this is the joy of having started in the middle we're going to just come across that um v there and then we can start doing two three four five okay so we've got our five squidge down so i've got one that's that's where i've turned the corner it's a bit errant just fetch that into line there we go and then we can do our two across what i would say if you like me i would like that to be even so that one is opposite that one so i'm now going to go round the two go on round there getting that into position and sliding round and then we're going to one two three four five do two one two one two three four five now i would undo that because that to me is is a bit wonky i'm just going to tweak that but i would probably have oh no they go sorted so now our wire is coming below I'm going to turn it over again, snip it, and see where that's a bit open. Again, it's the perfectionist in me. I'm just going to make sure those are all nice and tidy and tight. So we've now got our basic unit. We need to attach those there and those there. We're going to have a small piece of wire. So if you've got bits like this that you've cut off to end with, um, I haven't actually attached those at the bottom on the other necklace. But there we go. That shows my point eight. Uh, my point one mil is strong enough. So, but I do want to attach these because that's going to take the weight of the necklace. So I'm going to pop in through there, and I want to wrap three times around that first one. Then I'm going to wrap twice around the big loop and into that little loop. So I'm just going to go feed it through there. One, two, and then another three. Okay. Again, I fetched it up through the middle rather than leaving it on the outside and then trim 
those off and again so you're trimming it you don't trim it there you're trimming it as it comes up so if 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 that's my wire i'm wrapping round i don't trim it top or bottom i trim it on the side because if you trim it there or there nothing's going to catch it because everything else goes top or bottom so we're going to trim that off there right you've now got your basic units so the only thing we've got left to do now once you've created your basic units is we want to make the attachment that goes between the two so if you had your next one let's do it on that side would be there there we go so there's our units that we've wired all together we're going to pop uh, one of our four mil gemstones on a head pin right so I'm using an eye pin here because I can just go directly from there to there. So same principle as I was doing before with those loops. I can just bend that down, take that loop over there, try and get it the same size. So on my pliers, that loop is there. So I'm going to do it approximately the same place. Don't worry if it's not exact, but again, nobody's going to see that close. But if you can get it as close to the size as possible, and those pliers. Trim that off. Right, so make sure, see how those are slightly twisted? They need to be in the same plane, so just tweak those so they're parallel. And then you can just open that, pop it through there. Open that one, pop it through there. Of course, they are attached. Okay, so now you've, you create your chain so they sit nicely between. We're then going to take our, um, our gate, pop it on. We're going to pop one of our four mil on. Come on, where's our four mil? Then we're going to pop our, our gate on. Then our next four mil goes on there. Okay. Again, you're going to bend it over. Now, depending on your head pin, these are a little bit soft. So be careful that you want a hardened one, a good strong head pin. So make your loop. There we go. Trim it off, bend that out. So you want a decent, you know, don't use a featherweight head pin to do this. You want a decent one pop that through there that is then going to sit in that central groove there of the biggest um, part of that close that down so that then sits in there this is going to look lovely in quite bridal in in the um, agate with the white and silver so that's that bit done right I'm just going to grab the necklace because then the only bit left is this bit. Now, if you've got a clasp, then use a clasp. I've, um, I've made a little clasp and then just use your connectors. These are exactly the same as you've just done, but instead of putting your units, you're just putting a jump ring in between and then your uh, J clasp can just sit in any of those and give you an extension. It's nice to have that piece at the end I think it finishes a, a piece off, but also if you're selling, it gives you it gives it gives the person buying that option and that uh, flexibility. So I'll put pop that back on there, and I'll show you how to make a quick clasp. Again, if you're using the same um, material, this uh, and it's an unusual. I mean, silver's fine. You can pick up a silver clasp. Um, if you're using something like an antique bronze, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And it's quite easy to do a little one. You want a nice little loop on one end. That's going to attach it. Make sure it's big enough to fit on your wire. 
and then depending on how big a loop you want you're just turning it round the base of your round nose pliers to create that um, bit on that end so this bit here what that'll do it stops it scratching if you've got sterling silver wire you can do a blob on the end and then you want the tiniest little uh, you want your loop on the other end to attach to your wire whoops there you go it helps if you can see it doesn't it and there's your little j clasp so you put that all together and you've got your necklace done have fun have a fantastic christmas this is my last advent calendar for this year so have an amazing christmas thank you for all your support please send your pictures up to the wall of fame we love to see them we've seen some fantastic ones as we've been um, check on the website www.jewelrymaker.com for anything that you haven't got and also um, pop, pop your makes in jm share your makes on facebook have a fantastic christmas and a lovely new year na dolig slawen a blaudid newydd ar happy christmas and happy new year bye bye